Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and this amazing video, I'm Aditya. In this video, we are going to see how to do data fetching in Nux3. So without any further ado, let's begin. Okay, before I begin, I would like to thank you all for contributing into the poll that I ran uh, last week where you all voted for Nux3 data fetching. Thank you so, so much for suggesting me with this topic for this video. Please do uh keep loving this channel like this please do vote whenever when i ran the poll please let me know what uh, options you'd like to see what videos you'd like to see and again thank you very 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 much so let's begin with this video here we have a simple app very very simple app it's taken from that uh nux3 superbase tutorial so if you haven't checked that video please do check that video as well so i'll be using here garchi apis to get the list of books so if you haven't seen the video or the playlist series using creating a headless e-commerce store using next and garchi cms so i will put the link in the description below as well please do check that series as well uh in this here we are just using that api and we are just getting the list of books so let me show you first the traditional approach where we have to, we have a simple next tab first of all then we have our header and this thing over here uh, that head tag re uh, refers to our meta tags and then we have the header which resembles this header over here which just acts as a navigation bar between normal loading and lazy loading we'll see that lazy loading part later uh, but here we have the list of products being rendered and if there is some other process happening like when the list is getting rendered at that time like when we fetch the data in the meantime we see this now the thing about this data fetching is they work on server as well as on client side so we'll be focusing mostly on the server side data fetching so let me show you one quick example of what happens when we do it in a traditional approach so uncomment we will comment this use async data go back over here and uncomment this traditional approach so then this over here and yeah there so things will work as it is if i go back over here that's great so you see like step by step things were rendered so first we had our header and then the list of products now if i go over here to view page source you will see that the list of products here it's like empty so if i just uh, wrap this and show you guys over here you'll see like it's completely empty uh, over here also you will see that we are using api keys and the url so this part would be uh, visible to the client side script as well so because garchi cms uses this token for billing so if you are using some similar service like this where the tokens are used for billing and this token needs to be secure then this script or this part is going to go for the client side so it's kind of brings two problem the first problem is security that our tokens and everything are getting exposed and the second problem is this seo problem now when you're dealing with single page applications this aspect is great like you can use on mounted hook to get the data and then where you don't worry about much on seo and to hide your token you can use another your own api and you can make a server side call to that api so that's all manageable but what if there was a way where we can just have all these functionalities where we have good seo and we don't have to create separate api in the server middleware uh, folder or we can just write quickly the like we can just straight away use this url to get the data or fetch the data straight away just passing some options so for that basis or for that reason we have data fetching in next sorry next <laughs> so sorry in next and it's similar to next which where in next we have get server side props where we make an uh, api request or do some database queries in get server side props then we get the data and all that function runs on server side plus the page is completely rendered server side in the same way in this uh use async data or in nux3 we have a composables or some composables which are one of them is use async data where the code will run on the server side and it will hydrate your page or the html and it will render your entire page also server side so let me show you an example so i'll uncomment this part over here and how it works is here you'll see we have a wait keyword so here i'm using setup script over here 
and this await keyword is necessary because this thing user sync data is going to be an asynchronous function so we want to make it synchronous somehow as the name suggests it's async so we want to make it sync so for that reason we are using await and here we are passing the key for that api so this key just resembles like what this api name is in this case i'm rendering products so i'm calling it products you can call it anything you like just make sure it's unique for each api it's just a good practice uh, to have it unique and to have it according to the name that that api does the second option to this function is a callback now here you will again see that i'm using an async function okay it's not necessary you have to use async you can use normal callback the reason i'm using async here because i'm again using await keyword for this axios request because this function this callback function that we are passing it is going to be a getter function so it's going to make some api call or do some magic on the server side and get the data and we need to return that data so that we can pass it to our front end in this case our this template over here now let me show you quickly the types that this uh, user sync data has so here you will see like the key which resembles a unique key to ensure that data fetching can be properly deduplicated across the requests plus we have the handler function that we just saw which just makes an api call and the third parameter which is an optional parameter is options now this options again is a list of key value pair so in this list of key value pair let me tell you one by one what these keys are so server resembles whether this function to be run on server side or client side by default it runs on server side so if i go over here you see it defaults to true so by default use async data runs on server side then we have lazy so we will see this lazy loading on when we use use lazy async data so in this case you can also pass your lazy to be true then it will load the data without blocking your navigation then the default which resembles a factory function to set the default value of the data and our diff and, and the, whatever data we are going to get like whatever response actually or whatever result we are going to get after this function completes completely that response will be in this format where we will have a data which is going to be a reactive value then we will have a pending flag which is again going to be a reactive reactive value this pending flag will help us know like whether the data request or this database fetching sorry not data fetch database fetching but the data fetching is still continuing or it's completed so the pending flag will be helpful in that and the refresh function will be used to ref make that request again so you could say refreshing the data so as the name suggests error if there are any error when we make it this request so this is what we are going to get in the return but along with that going back to this async options that we can pause with this uh, use async data function or composable the next one is transform so the transform one what it allows is whatever data you get let's say i'm getting data as array and if i want to make it into a object or a json object then i can use the transform function here or vice versa so you can transform your input however you want using this transform function the pick <laughs> uh and this pick key is very powerful actually what it does is you pass there a array of string so it's going to be something like let's say in my api i have products then let's say links and let's say some other random keys and this like the data is huge like there's a lot of data in that api so currently we don't have a lot of data but let's just assume that we have a lot of keys in that api so this pick is going to be very handy where i will just pick what keys i want from that api response and only that data will come to the front end so it helps to have less data on the wire plus it helps to have like faster tra uh, data fetching so this pick is very powerful function or powerful key i would say initial cache well by default it's set to true so it will skip the payload cache for initial fetch if it's set to false so this is what this are the list of options we have so far so going forward over here so we can now see our user sync data response so okay this should be error not errors so now if i go back over here refresh the page and go over to view page source we will see that everything is there so this our this was uh, here we go this thing over here so our HTML is hydrated with the data 
and also we have uh, the, the process of this code ran on the server side to confirm that this code run on server side what we could do is here i'm gonna say if process dot server so in nux3 this process dot server is use you could say you can use it as a flag to make sure whether the function or the code is running on the server side or client side if it's running on the server side this will be true if it's running on the client side this will be false so if i go back over here and now refresh the page if it's running on server i will see the data and there we go so i can still see the data that means it's 100 percent running on server so this was all about use async data and not just that like we don't have to use axios we can also use dollar fetch that comes with nux3 so dollar fetch under the hoods uses uh, oh my fetch library so that library provides you fetch api <laughs> but a better version of fetch api An api here we have so it's simply as i said it's like fetch so here we are making an url request and the options that we want to pass now this options resemble these options over here the token that because we need to pass the token to the api so these are just the uh, request options so let's give it a try to this uh, i will need the pending as well so because i'm using pending here so for that reason i will need pending so if i go back over here refresh the page and there we go everything works as it is without any problem now you will see like in this user sync data we are doing only two things a key and a callback function and in that callback function it's a simple callback function where we are just making an api call like we are not doing any complicated logic the main reason we use use async data composable is when we have want to make an api request and also we want to use some complex function inside it or we want to run some extra functionality function inside this so let's say before this making this api request i want to run some another function let's say function to do some random things <laughs> like some random logic so in this case use async data is very powerful but what if i'm not having any function to do some random logic or code to do some random logic i'm just making an api request then in that case i should use or i can use use fetch composable so what is this use fetch composable well this use fetch composable is exactly similar like use async data with this dollar fetch so how it works is you pass in the url where you want to make the api request and then you pass in your extra headers as an options now the thing over here is you will see that we are passing key over here like products products but use fetch will automatically create a key for each api request so we don't have to worry about passing a key separately so it takes care of that part as well so if i save this and go back over here and refresh the page you'll see everything works as it is like there's no difference actually i can just pass here url uh, rather than passing hard-coded values i could do something like this because it's same with the declarations we are doing over here so url comma options and if i go back over here you'll see like so less of code that we don't have to write uh, all that logic and everything so if i go back to the documentation of use fetch you'll see here inside use fetch over here so the types are very simple where you have the url then the options and these options are nothing but if you want to pass key then the method whether it's a get method or a post method then the parameters if you're passing any parameters uh, body parameters if you're passing any body parameters the headers which we, which we are currently passing then again the same parameters like server and lazy lazy to do use it as a lazy function or more like use lazy fetch and server to make sure whether to make it run on server side or client side now if you or if i show you over here this server is by default true so this use fetch by default also works on the server side it also has that pick option over here so this pick option it's same like the uh, user sync data like most of these options are same like user sync data because it runs user sync data function behind the scene so it is you could say it's like a sugar coating for user sync data and dollar fetch so it just reduces our code nothing else so that's use fetch now let's see the lazy part of it which is 
first for use async data so let's see the use lazy async data so if i click over here you'll see i saw that processing like it was it was very slow but uh i think it may not come again so if i go back over here and see it again yeah it may not come because it will cache that request so it there was that processing before and that processing is because what it does is now here i'm getting list of all products uh, in this lazy async data you could see because in the previous one i was putting a filter over here but in this case uh, use lazy async data i'm getting all the product now when is this useful so how it works is when you have lots of data to be kind of rendered or let's say when your server is having some uh, like a sleeping time or something or some <laughs> there's a way what is a word for that's a technical word latency actually sorry so if there is your server is having some good latency and like let's say three seconds four seconds of latency but you don't want your client in this case your user to wait till the data loads so in that case you could do use lazy async data because the difference between use async data and use lazy async data is that use lazy async data do not block your navigation while use async data blocks the navigation till the products or data data is loaded so use lazy async data what it will do it will render the page even if the data is not loaded but does it render on server side so let's see that so if i go over here and go back over here so you will see all our products are still there so it does renders on server side so it hydrates the page behind the scene but it doesn't blocks the navigation so that's the difference between use async and use lazy async as the name suggests lazy it just it's just doing lazy loading of the data in simple words so if i go to the documentation to use lazy async the options and everything is exactly the same like uh, whatever we whatever options or the set of options we pass to use async data so if i go over here you'll see like they're exactly the same the only difference being the lazy flag is set to true by default so rest everything is as it is same now as you could see here there is one thing we need to consider is handling the null part because by default when we fetch the data the data or the, the variable data is going to be null because here we are using this uh, data over here so it's going to be null so we might need a watcher to make sure that what to do when it hydrates again so in that case like we in this case we are not using watcher because we are using the pending flag but if we are not using pending then we will need a watcher to just swap things here and there but in any case like yeah we need to handle the null situation on our side unlike use async data so i guess that's all in this video uh let me know if you like this video and also let me know what would you like to see in the next videos so if you like this video please hit the thumbs up button if you feel this video is worth sharing with your network please do share with your network and if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do subscribe to my channel so thank you for watching again see you in the next video till the next time goodbye